do that. Anwar, thank you very much for that. Um, just wanted to give you, I know we're going into the topic of HEX, which has got um, sort of alongside it. So what I want to try and cover tonight is really the, the practical side of it. So I want you to go away knowing, and some of you will already have a clear understanding of, of some of what we'll cover, but I want to make sure that we're all... Um, Okay, lovely thing. So I'm just noting the good comments there. Um, I want to make sure that everyone understands, you know, how you find out what your debt is. How do you know how much you're paying? Um, to have a little bit of a consideration about, you know, do you pay more off early or what else could you be doing with that money? So there's, there's some really practical things that I want you to really go away with tonight. But alongside that, I know that, as you'll know from listening to the media, but also it's been ongoing. And I wanted to bring this slide up here is really for you to also know that, um, there are changes that may be implemented um, around the HEX help debt and we need to be aware of those and just to really encourage you to keep informed. Your role in that, if there's petitions, you know, if you feel like that's something that you want to be involved in to try and shape and change what's going on, certainly encourage you to do so. The SCPA um, made a submission last year to the Senate to try and get rid of indexing altogether, which we'll talk about a bit in tonight's session. Um, that didn't, that wasn't successful last year. Um, so Craig from the SCPA went down um, and tried to, to to get that to be abolished. But we've we've seen, as we can see in the media, if we keep up to date, um, there are ch possible changes to it. So the indexing may change um, as opposed to CPI, which is what it's currently being used. It, they may be, they're looking at ideas of actually looking at wage growth because wage growth isn't actually rising as steadily as CPI. So it doesn't actually seem fair so there's a whole lot of discussions. So I want us to be aware of those and really encourage you to keep informed. And the key thing is really, what can I do in the situation? So that's just asking yourself to, to see, is that, are there petitions and things like that that you can um, look at and be involved in to try and shape some of this for the future? So that's the key. Um, but what we're gonna cover tonight, and I know we've just got the hour, so I'll try and cover the content and then cover off any questions at the end. So the first thing is is really those practical things, is making sure that you all know where to go to to find out what is your debt, how much is it, and also to keep track of it over time. How much do you need to pay back each year to make sure that if you are working, that your employer is um, accounting for that, the fact that, well, firstly, that they know that you have a hex debt so that they can be um, holding back that amount each year to make sure that you're keeping up with those um, um, compulsive repayments. We're going to have a bit of a chat around um, the question of, you know, should you pay it early? Um, again, um, I can't give you any advice here, but we can talk about some of the impacts or considerations that you might make um, and what, what paying off early means. Um, and everyone's situation is different, which we'll have a look at. Um, and obviously linked to, to that um, is, you know, how does HEX help affect your borrowing power? Because sometimes that's also tied into that decision around paying it all off early. Is it better to pay it off early or not? So these are the kind of the, the key four questions that we're going to have a look through tonight. So I hope um, that everyone's um, happy with those. Um, just been through, even through the chat, can I just check in? I'm, I'm assuming that everybody is paying, you know, has a hex debt that's accumulating with their studies at the moment, or is it one that they've got previously from their undergrad? So, Faye, I can see you nodding. Yes, I can't see anyone else's faces, but it may be just adding to the chat just so you, so I know what your situation is. Do you currently have, you've got both, okay, so from your undergrad and now you're accumulating with your postgrad? So Nicola's is your undergrad, and then are you paying for your, your postgrad yourself? Okay, great, cool. And then current debt as I'm a current student. Okay, cool. So that's, that's fine. Great. Okay, so that's good just to have as background. Um, so firstly, and this may be something that you're aware of, do you know, do, do you all know where to go to find out what it is? So Faye's nodding here too, so you know how to, to log in. Um, and do you go in through MyGov to find yours? Yeah. Does everybody else, so Nicola's saying yes as well. Has everybody else um, found that that's where they're, they're keeping track of what the debt is? So it's just a scene. 
imagine can and i please um have information around that sorry i'm driving uh that's okay so is this patricia ekta pardon my name is ekta i just wanted to know that where do we find that information okay sure yes i'll i'll cover it up i'll talk you through it now so to find the information you go to um your mygov account yep and you log on to that website and you actually need to link um your hex deck um associated with that through but the instructions are very clear so i've included them here in the slide so you go okay, through those yep. instructions um through your mygov account and it's pretty easy to set up um it's similar yep. to your superannuation or it, it's a great portal to kind of have everything all centralized so you know how to keep track of it so you'll see it there and then once you link in yep. Um, you can view it um, by selecting sort of loan accounts and then it will come up. And um, Faye, for yours, because you've got two, right? So does, have you got them showing as separate or is it a combined? Um, so I, um, I'm i going to start studying in term three. Okay. So I thought to attend the session today to have the information in advance. Oh, fabulous. That's great. So you're just getting organized. So yeah, so yes. if you're if you're paying for it through your hex help, um that's so what it's not until you start studying and okay, yeah. yeah, that you'll you'll see it through. Yeah. So that's good. So at least you'll know you can um you won't be able to set this up yet because you won't have an account, you won't have a loan account already. But once yeah. you do, you can yeah, follow these instructions um through MyGov. All right, perfect. Yeah, so Thank great. you. You're welcome. Hey, just interested to know how your two debts appeared. Are they separate? I actually haven't been on to my gov for a while, so I don't. Yeah, know. no, that's okay. No, just just curious. So, um, yeah. and it's just just it's not a big deal. But I was just interested to know to see how that they um appear. So they'll either be separate. So if you've got one for your undergrad and now your postgrad, um, but they will be. The, the way in which they're indexed and adjusted is all the same. It all occurs at the same time of the year and you'll see all of that, that um, roll over. Um, okay, so that's the first thing. So that's good that everyone knows where to go, where to get the updated information. Because uh, often with this, it can be for a lot of people, they just have this debt hovering over their head and they stress out about it. So they're like, oh my gosh, how, they don't know how much it is. And this is just accumulating. But at least you know a way to go and get the information, keep track of it. Um, Amanda, so have you just logged into yours and you found out how much yours is? Okay. Um, and then it's working through, I'm glad you, I'm glad, glad, glad you got that, but, um, and, and so alongside, as I was saying, the, the practicalities of, of, of understanding the information, I know that there's also the emotional side of it too, and, and having a debt. Um, but what, and I, and I guess my, what I wanted to say here relates a little bit to what I was hearing in the media recently, where you may have seen as well, I think it was on ABC, they had interviewed somebody who was um, a psychology student and they had just um, graduated with, uh, and I'd be guessing, I can't remember how much, maybe it was $40,000. And they were so angry and they just wanted to, you know, give it all up and move to Mexico and become a diving instructor or something. So I think what we need to do is to bring a little bit of level headedness towards this as well, because you've just invested in your, you know, you've, you, yes, you have a debt, but you've also banged a whole lot of skills that are going to be able to allow you to earn in the, in the future. So um, you, I think we can get a lot of, there's a lot of media attention around it too. So we can have a lot of, the indexing is one thing. So I think we, we can talk through that, but just to have the debt itself alone, you know, it, it is what you have. Um, if you go, if you were to turn back time, would you have done something differently? You know, if you were to look at different career paths and different costs of them, would you have done something differently? You know, maybe that's something to consider. But I think it's important to kind of unpick some of the negative emotions around this debt as well, and just to make sure that you're kind of carrying it with a like a level head to think, well, yes, you've got the thirty-four thousand. And Amanda, be interested to know, are you feeling like? Are you feeling frustrated that that's a lot of money or are you feeling like you've got, you know, a decent education that then's going to allow you to earn a good income? <laughs> it, um, makes me sad to see 34000 in debt. Um, yeah. I The only loan I've ever had is my house mortgage. Everything yes. I've had, I'm 40, 
five years old and I've never borrowed money except for a mortgage. So Amazing. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, that's a brilliant though. That, that, that's such an achievement too. So, yeah, super impressed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I can, but, but it sounds like then that relationship with debt is, is a serious one, is a big one for you. Yeah. And perhaps it makes, because we have this um, emotional response, we also have this weight of it. And I know, yes, it is $34,000. Has it enabled you to earn a better income? Do you feel like your career has been? Definitely already, like I've completed yeah. my my graduate degree and now I'm going into honours and then there'll be masters so already I can see my earning capacity yep. increase Perfect. Uh, and it's only going to get better so everything you said um yep. yeah I think it's very accurate and yeah we kind of got to keep I think our vision on the brighter future yeah absolutely and and really protect your peace around it because the media loves that role in, you know, causing us to be fearful or frustrated or angry. And 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 and, and, I, and I will talk about the indexing in, in a minute. But it's and it and situations where it can be really challenging, particularly for women who take time out of the workforce and perhaps they're, you know, taking that time for maternity leave. They they go off, you know, with a with a debt and maybe don't go back into the workforce for six seven years. And that amount has through indexing becomes, you know, so much larger and they haven't been. So there's, there's a lot of inequities. Again, it's another around, particularly around women and, and finances, that that's an issue that needs to be addressed. Um, but I think I think it's really wise for all of you to, to look at your own situations individually and to bring some of that um, yeah, balanced view and try to protect your peace, particularly with um, with what the media is going to say. And, and and I was just yeah really shocked with with particularly somebody who was highly educated and studying psychology. Their reaction, their, their like such a strong reaction to just give it all up and, and walk away from it, um, was curious. So yeah, no, I'm pleased, Amanda, that that's how you're you're seeing yours. Um, so and 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 we will talk a little bit about. Thanks for sharing too, you know, like in terms of your, I can hear your relationship with money has been a pretty positive one because you haven't ever had debt and you've got, you've got your mortgage. But we'll have a little chat about, um, you know, in terms of channeling money that you have, you know, is it worth sending it to, to Hex or in your situation, I, 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 we, we can talk a little bit later about that as well, but in terms of, you know, paying off other debts as well. So we'll talk about that in a second. But it's okay. So to, to carry it on, though, with so we're quite clear on where to get our information, which is really important. So always coming back to your own information, knowing exactly how much your debt is, is really important. Um, we do run a webinar throughout the year, which is all around budgeting as well, and also some sort of um, financial literacy um, skills. And I use a template that helps you to keep track of your finances. So I would keep track of your HEX debt as well. So periodically... Um, obviously, once a year, you're going to find out about it when it's indexed. But it's it's one of those, yes, it's a, a liability, but you're going to see it coming down. And it allows you, if you have a whole snapshot of your financial situation, it's just one part of it. Um, so you'd want to be seeing some of your other parts, like your mortgage coming down, um, other retirement savings going up. So it's just a part of a whole larger picture of your finances. But I can certainly understand it's not a nice activity to, to check in and see the debt. Um, now, this has got a whole lot of words that I wish I'm, I'm aware of, but I, so I'm not expecting you to read all of this, but th this next next little bit is really, you know, now us talking about some of the indexing and just confirming, making sure everyone's clear on how that actually works. So each year, so that in the past, we, HEX hasn't always had a lot of attention because the indexing that's occurred each year has only been at a small rate. And, and I'll show you in a minute the rates over history of what they've been. It's just over the last three, two or three years that it's really increased. And that's why <clears throat> the indexing is having such a big impact. But just to make sure everyone's clear, that essentially, and they talk about, you know, that doesn't it doesn't have interest, but it does go up. It is indexed each year on the 1st of June. And it's indexed by the consumer price index. So whatever that was. Um, so historically, it's usually in, you know, in the two or three percent. But last year it was seven and it's likely to be four or four and a half this year. So what happens is, um, and then the, the third part here, sorry, is that they're not indexed until they're 11 months old. So that also relates um, to, um, we had... Uh, other, it wasn't Hassini. We had somebody else on the call, so they were in their car 
um, who hasn't started their studies, you, just to let them know that they you won't have any indexing occurring until your, your debt is actually 11 months old. So they, it, it keeps track of when it actually gets charged to your account. And then when it's 11 months old, then you get the indexing. So we've got an example here. So Erin's um, got $9,000 of, of debt to repay. Uh, studies were taken between 2015 and 2017. On the 1st of June, 2023, so we're looking at a scenario for last year, the indexation was 7.1%. So that means on that 1st of June, so if you were to log into your MyGov account um, the next day, or I'm not sure how quickly it gets updated, um, but you'll see that index amount go up. So 7.1% is $639. So that 639 is getting added to your 9,000. So it's now $9,639. So that's happening each year. Um, we've, there's, there is obviously, as I just mentioned before, I didn't write out the scenario, but the sort of the shocking scenarios are more when yes, someone might have a gap in when they're working and that debt, debt just increases, it increases. Or some scenarios where the person isn't earning enough to counter the indexing that goes on. So although they're earning money and they're repaying what they need to, the indexing is outrunning the amounts that they're paying, if that makes sense. So their debt's actually going up or it's making very little difference. But that's a situation where somebody's not earning um, a, a high income. So is that quite clear for everybody? Everyone's aware of how the indexing works? Was there anything about it that they're not sure of? or they didn't know, is it all good? All good, pretty straightforward. Okay, cool. So just, just that slide to give you that little bit of history, and this is why it's, you know, that got so much media attention at the moment. If we're looking over, you know, the past 10, 12 years, the indexing has really been quite low. So it hasn't made a significant difference. But now we're getting up to the, the four and seven and four percent again. Um, that's when the, the the issue of indexing has become so significant. So this is where uh, inquiries are going into whether it's appropriate that CPI should be the index or if it should be the wage growth, as I mentioned before, or whether, you know, if we can get rid of indexing altogether, which everyone would like. And obviously from your point of view, you want it to be as low as possible, right? <laughs> so, um, but, from, but from a reasonable point of view, um, if your if your wages aren't if CPI is outdoing our wages and the repayment is all based on wages, it seems reasonable for it to be based on a wage based indexation. So let's hope that 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 happens. Has anybody been involved in any of the petitions or any of that side of things? No. Not seeing anything in the chat either. Yep, all good. But yeah, it might be. Um, if you want to look out for those, I can share some of the links later as well. Um, if there's anything live at the moment. Um. Yep, yeah, Nicole. Yep. Yeah. So there, yeah, there was, and there was about six months ago. There was one as well. Um, it's just a matter of you know finding something you can feel like you're doing something to influence it. Um, so it's great. I'll I'll look to see if there is any um. Um, current ones at the moment that you can get involved in. Um, just so you know as well, that study assist, which you probably all look across as well, that study assist website, which I've got sourced at the bottom, um, is where you find all of that information about the indexing percentages and all of the information about how it works as well. Uh, just if you want to have that information. Um, you're probably aware as well um, that there are, obviously there's the compulsory repayments and then there's voluntary ones. Um, so your compulsory payment is all to do with how much you earn. So the more you earn, the higher the percentage, and the percentage is all based on a percentage of what you earn. So the more you earn, the more you repay, essentially. Um, and the thresholds change as well. So that's also part of that's up for discussion is where it's, um, I guess, most challenging for people in, in the, the brackets where they were earning less, but they're wanting to push, which has happened recently, they pushed the threshold up. So it didn't start, repayments weren't compulsory. 
um, if I move to the next slide, it's come up to 51,000, where it was um, the previous year, it was 47. So you'll see, see that that threshold will change as well. Um, so that's why your repayments will change. So each year this, this will get updated and change um, as along with the indexing as well. So there's a couple of moving parts. Um, I guess the key is, is knowing how much do you pay, but it's not that you're going to be calculating it. But what I would encourage you to do is um, check it. Um, so if you're currently working, what you would have done is uh, notify your employer that you do have a HEX debt. Have you all done that with your current employers? Can you just do that via the tax form, that tax debt? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's it, yeah, yeah, which is which is all well and good. Like if you start a new job and you've got the debt and, and you were aware of it then, you probably would have ticked the, ticked the box. Yeah. But if you've started studying since, since you've been working and you didn't have the debt before, you may not have let them know. So just make sure that they do know so that they're taking out so you don't get any um, extra tax that you've got to pay or extra payments you've got to pay at the end of the year. Um, so it's probably just working with, you can always check with your payroll, uh, just send them an email and just double check that uh, that they've got that. But another way to know is through your pay slip. So you'll see that it should be itemised as well. Oh, okay. And you'll see those amounts. You know how much to take out or how does my employer know how much to take out? But I guess that's something HR, payroll. Yeah. They, they sort out. Yeah, absolutely. So there are repayment tables, tax tables, just like for income tax. So essentially what they should be doing is, and if you wanted to check it, so you would you would look to, so if we've got the 2023-24 repayment year, so these are our rates here. And if you're on an annual salary and you know what that is, you would identify which band that it falls within. So if we just took an example, so say we were um, earning, say, $72,000 a year, mm -hmm. and that's that then me, if we look into here, we can see that we fall into the band of having to pay three and a half percent. So that would mean I'm just doing three and a half percent. So that would mean over the year we would be needing to repay two thousand five hundred and twenty dollars. And if you were being paid weekly, you would then divide that by fifty two. So you should see forty eight dollars forty six being um, taken out of your pay each week does that make sense yeah and currently yeah. the threshold was forty eight thousand. was it that was on the other screen so no the current the, the current threshold here is fifty one thousand. Okay. yeah this is the current year the 23 24 year what was the so this is on the so other that so, so that was for so these are um these are the different for different years so the previous year it was 48 and the year before that it was 47 really just to demonstrate that you can see that it gets adjusted each year yeah. so it does go up it's trying to give the people in the lower brackets just that little bit more space so they don't have to necessarily be paying it off right okay and so what is it for 20 yeah. years so the 2023-24 year which we're in now so this is the th the threshold is fifty one thousand five hundred and fifty. So if you earn below that, you won't have to pay anything, repay anything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And can I just ask Liz? So if you if it's under that threshold, and you're not repaying anything, is it still the yes. CPI still going up on the debt? So yeah. your debt's still going up even if That's you're not. It. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the challenge for people who are le earning below that and then some people think well you can have people react to that in different ways they'll be like well I'm just never going to earn more than that and I'm just going to never pay my debt off fine you know that's okay but then you're also kind of at the same time stopping yourself from earning a good income so you might as well try to you know if there are jobs that you want to do don't hold yourself back I guess that's what I'm trying to say just to avoid paying off your debt um, but you can also see how that could impact somebody who's out of the workforce for, you know, whatever reasons, if it's a lot of the time it's, it's for family. Um, so, yeah, that can be hard, but that debt's going to be increased without them paying anything. It's just growing. So the psychology of that and having that debt grow um, is really stressful. And I don't know if that's really being 
acknowledged and managed particularly well as well around all of this. So yeah, but yeah, no, it will certainly be indexed regardless of what you pay back. And indexed based on the year of study and the percentage at the time. Um, indexed, so it's indexed by CPI and it's the whole amount that you've accumulated. So, so if you're studying at the moment, so I know that yours, you'll be adding to your tab, so to speak, like as you're studying, whatever you've, you've spent or you've that year, um, on the 1st of June, whatever that balance is, that whole balance will be indexed. Does that make sense? So it could have just been for the last semester. It could have been the last term that you just did. That's, that amount is still there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's all the, the repayment rates. So hopefully everyone's got their head around that too. So now we've got, we know how to find how much is the debt. We know that it's going to grow with the indexation. But we also know that we've got, we, we, there's the compulsory amounts that we have to pay depending on which bracket we're in um, when we're earning. Uh, and so, th and this was just a really, like, this is not a real pace, but this was just a mock-up. But what I would encourage you, what you should see and a good way to confirm whether it's coming off or not is to check your pay slip. So you'll see, you'll have a section for your salary and wages. You'll have the tax associated with the salary, your income tax, but you should actually also have what it will be called is your STSL component. So it won't come up as HEX help anymore. This is to cover off um, other student loans in addition to higher ed. Um, you can have other student loans as well, but they've, they've kind of grouped them together um, for the tax reporting purposes and you'll see them, you'll see it reported there. So you'll want to see something there. Um, so for in this instance, we've got nothing coming out and you know that you've earned over that 51,000 or you're due to earn over that 51,000 um, in the year that you'd want to be contacting your um, payroll, HR, just to say, um, I want to check to make sure that I've ticked the box, that I do have a hex debt and that they will then take that out for you. Um, okay, so I hope we come so that's kind of, we're kind of now moving on to sort of some of the tactics around the debt. So we kind of know what it is, how to keep track of it and make sure that we keep track of, make the, that we're making the right repayments. So that's kind of those sort of foundational skills. Um, the next sort of section is kind of now thinking about it and thinking sort of tactically about, well, what, what do I do with it? And there's this question of, you know, should I repay it earlier? Are any of you thinking about paying it earlier or making some of those voluntary contributions? They say no, definitely not. <laughs> that was quite clear. Amanda, were you thinking of, of making any extra con on contributions? Uh, no, I'm only just getting by on my little part-time wage now. So yeah. just okay, sure. Yeah, and and, and, well, that, and of course, particularly while you're all studying as well, you'll be juggling that. And then, yeah, if you're working, that's that's hard. And, and, it's, and it's also just to be, you know, think about some of this for the future too. So once you have finished your studies and you're working full time, whether this question kind of comes up for you again as well and maybe think back to what, what we what we chat about. Um, I guess some of the, the, the um, important things to think about, um, particularly, you know, if you're going to be, you know, and, and, and you've said it there, Amanda, you've, you've only got so much money. We all only have so much money that's coming in. and We've got to sort of give it all a purpose or a job. And, you know, firstly, we've got to make sure that we've got, you know, food and electricity, we pay our mortgage or our rent. Um, and then if you've got some left over, you're going to be trying to think, you know, well, should I be putting it into retirement? Should I be getting rid of this debt? Um, should I be paying my mortgage? And the key thing to think about really is that the considerations anyway. So I'll kind of note some of these out. Um, if you have any other consumer debt like credit cards, um, this debt is not as costly to you um, or nor does it negatively impact your ability to say borrow money if that's something you want to do in the future to buy a home you um, definitely consider prioritizing any consumer debt above this because the interest rates and the fees and the penalties for not paying credit card debt are much higher than paying off your hex so obviously make your um 
your compulsory repayments, that's always a given. Um, but if you do have consumer debt, so that could be car loans as well, um, those are more of the priority if you've got extra money that you, you know, to channel it towards those, those things first. Um, particularly if you've got the expensive types, you know, credit cards or buy now, pay later, or any of those kind of things. And the other consideration is, is your hex debt. Um, so if you have a home loan as well, um, that that would be something that I would prioritise as well, as opposed to, to paying off because you've already got the loan. Um, we can talk a little bit about the impact after this on the next slide, the impact that the hex debt has on your ability to borrow money. So that's a different situation. But if you're somebody who's already got the loan, you bought your house, um, that you don't need to be, I guess, um, uh, presenting because uh, when the bank's looking at you, they'll consider your hex debt and that has an impact on whether how much they're going to loan to you or not. But if you've already got it, um, so that's great. So I would be, yeah, again, just channeling any extra money towards that mortgage to get rid of it. Um, your hex debt, as of, which is really lovely to say, but it dies with you. So it's not something that you're going to pass on to children or family members, which is sometimes something that people will want to consider as well. They don't want to be passing that on. Um, but once you've done your final tax return at the at end of life, however that works out, it, it's not something that goes on. So, so um, that's also something to think about. So it's really not uh, a priority. Um, making those voluntary contributions, as I said, is, is important. So I guess that the key thing is is managing for ourselves, as we, we've said before, is it's really the the emotional psychology around it, you know, just having it sit there and finding a way to be at peace with it, um, you know, particularly whilst you're, you know, paying off your mortgage. And once you've paid that off, then I guess it's evaluating a situation and, again, looking to say, the money that's coming in, where is it best channeled towards, you know, your situation or circumstances may have changed. Maybe you've got other things that you you want to invest in um, and just making those normal compulsory um, contributions is, is enough. Um, so, but everyone's situation is different and also we need to keep an eye on the indexation and, and what's happening as well for you to make that decision. So I hope that's not too wafty, but um, gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, so I guess just in this quick, quick kind of just trying to pull some pictures to kind of I, I guess the kind of the, the, the two things that you're weighing up are um, so if you don't make any extra payments towards your debt this is really depressing this is how people view their debt and, and we wanted to kind of move away from that but if you don't make any um, extra uh, you know repayments what you're doing is really putting that money aside to increase um, a deposit for a home, or if you've already bought one, you're going to be paying it off quicker. So what that means is you've got that that deposit, which is larger, which is going to mean that you can um, either not have to borrow as much, or maybe allows you to buy or to step into a, into the um, the house market that you may not have been able to do. So you've got to keep that in mind because once you've made those um, contributions to, to hex, it's not you can. Um, you can't dip into them again. You can't get them back again. Um, then I guess the other side of this is if you were to make, you know, contributions to your hex debt and reduce it, so make it smaller, um, you would reduce your deposit for a home loan. So you would have less of a deposit. But what it would mean is that you would, um, you would have less, because you've reduced that debt for, for your hex, you would have less of your income having to go to repaying it. So you would have more cash available to repay a loan, if that makes sense. So they're the two things that a bank would be looking at if you've taken, and, and Amanda will be fully aware of this. And for those of us that will have mortgages, that they, they're essentially looking at, you know, how much is that deposit? And then how what is your, your ability to repay the loan? And that's all about your cash flow. So how much is coming in? Um, so you're kind of impacting those with this decision. So it's it's really a sort of a case by case situation. Um, but what I would be, you know, thinking most people would be doing is is you know building up that deposit for themselves for a home to get, particularly as the housing market is you know it's so expensive that you'd want you know to even to enable yourself to to do that. So um, at this stage. 
most people won't won't be channeling any money towards repaying more than they need to on their hex debt. Yeah. Um, and just a quick little side question here. So if you had two debts, if you had a credit card or a hex debt, which one are you going to pay off first? Lovely, lovely, lovely. Good, good, good. Um, so yes, so that's going to be the, the better use of that extra money um, in terms of your sort of looking at your whole financial situation. And then just sort of covering off here is how does hex affect my borrowing power, which is essentially what I've just sort of mentioned there is that um, it's that it's either going to so the amount of and and this is the thing too, which is which is the the issue of indexing. So as it gets larger and then the more you're going to have to repay, the bigger the debt is, um, the more challenging it is for people as well um, in terms of not only, you know, getting rid of the debt but to, to be able to service their mortgage as well. But the key thing is really cash flow. So um, in terms of how does HEX, to simply say, how does it affect your borrowing power? A, it depends on the amount that's being taken out of your income income which will automatically be coming out so when the bank asks for you to declare and, and give them that information about what do you earn what are your expenses hex is really treated as another expense so it's something that you have to repay and it has to be taken into consideration so um and then depending on how much you have left over we'll, we'll give them an indication of you know can you service this loan or not so that's really the, the key there um, and then the, the more, the bigger the deposit you have, the less you need to borrow. So the easier it is to service the loan, the easier it is for the bank to then spread that smaller loan out across 30 years or whatever they like to do. We want to pay it off much quicker than that, but um, over 30 years. And then the amount that you need to, to pay each week or, or fortnight is, is less. Um, so, yeah, it's really just knowing that those repayments are really treated as an expense from the bank's point of view. So, um, and just, you know, throughout all of these, these calculations, you can see on the slide, just a summary of it here. So it was just a simple um, calculation of just showing the impact of what your borrowing power could be if you've got a hex debt or, or without it. So it's about $50,000 difference there, just as a rough kind of giving you, you an example um, of what would be um, considered. But again, you it's important to be informed and have this information but you know if there's things if there's parts of it you can't really influence it just is what it is so you need to just make sure that it's being taken into consideration when you do apply for loans that you do have all of that information given to um, your lender to make sure that you're not going to be putting yourself at any sort of financial stress risk or anything um, make sure that it is included there and when you do quote your income that either it's the amount that excludes your hex repayment that you would have on your um, pay split or if it's if you have you have your income and then you ensure that you include your hex debt payment as an expense so it's likely that they would get you to fill out a, a, you know a little bit um they probably did that with you, um, Amanda, when you did yours. Did you have your hex debt? You would have when you when you got your home loan. No, I had my home loan first. Okay, okay, yep. So then, did you take that into consideration? Well, how has it impacted you then? Um, I don't know. I need to check my pay slip and see if money's been coming out. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and hoping yeah, that would be a good one to check. Yeah, because yeah. and that's and that's the key really is for so if you have your home loan first, it's then making sure that when you you've done your study and you're working and you're starting to repay the debt, that you when you're doing your own personal budget, that you make sure that you take it into an account as an expense too, um, and that you've kind of put that money aside or or it's you know being taken out already, so you don't have that. Um, you know, shock at the end of the year. Yeah. 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 But it's probably if you're working part time, and I know this is this isn't the forum to talk personally, but it's it's not likely to be a lot, um, depending on what you're doing. So but it's definitely worth just getting it checked so you know, you yeah, know where you are. Ever considered how my income would be reduced from the hex debt. So yeah. Those thresholds, yeah. I, yeah. 
where would we look up those thresholds because they do change so where do we find that information the ato website is is great or the study assist um those two government websites always go to those government websites they'll have those up to date um, thresholds and you can even look for something it's so what payroll this is kind of getting into the accounting side and you could you could even ask your HR or payroll person to actually walk you through what they're doing if you're somebody who wants to really understand and, and check um, particularly if you're working for somewhere maybe it's a small business and you might you know not feel 100% confident in what they're doing if you have all rights to ask them um, but what they will use, usually it's set up in, in the um, payroll system or the accounting system they're using. The, they'll have the up-to-date tables, but you can actually check them like your tax tables. You can download those from the ATO website. So you would put in, um, uh, uh, it's usually, I'm just not sure if they use STSL or HEX. I'm just looking to my other screen to just try and look it up for you. Um, but you would, it's um, the weekly, depending on when you're paid, you paid weekly or fortnightly? Fortnightly. Fortnightly repayment uh, table. Uh, fortnightly. I'm just having a look. Study and training support loans fortnightly tax table. So I was just going to send it to you in the chat, but that's helpful. Uh, firstly, I'll just send you where I've just gone now. This is just direct. Everyone can have a look at this. This is just in the ATO website. And the if you scroll down, study as a lookup tool, and then if you scroll part way down, using it says using this tax table, and then it's got a PDF file that says the fortnightly tax table, and this is the amount that should be withheld depending on what your fortnightly earnings are. So it can look a bit overwhelming at first if you're, um, if I could. Can you have you have you been able to are you on your computer now? Yes. Yeah. Have you been able to click through to that link? Um, it hasn't come through in the chat here. Oh, you too. Oh, I just went to did it go to Faye? Sorry. Um, how did I do that? Sorry, pardon me. Let me do that to everybody. So this is the table. And this is the information. So the first one is the table, and this is what they will use to work out how much to withhold. And most of it, so you'll see it's not it's not until you earning. So it's on the second page. So what you'll see, see how there's three columns for each for each thing? There's lots of three columns. So the first one is your earnings. So what you would do is look up, okay, what is my fortnightly earnings? And you could take that off. So if you earn $70,000 a year, you divide that by 52, sorry, $70,000 a year, divide that by 26 because you're fortnightly. Your fortnightly earning would be $2,692. So you would look up here, you would be fine. You'd be scrolling down a few pages to page three. So the four fortnightly earnings column to find that 2,692, 2,692. And then the gray column across tells you how much should be taken out. So in that situation, it's $80. So $80 a pay should be taken out. So you wouldn't be getting that. You'd be having tax taken out of that, which there's another tax table for. You get the tax taken out and then you take out the repayment as well. That's helpful. Thank you. Cool. No worries. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's uh, just having all the right information and knowing that it's all going, you know, working correctly is is the key, isn't it? So then you know the amount that's hitting your bank account, it means that because you want to know whether do I still need to pay hex out of this or has it already been paid? That's your big question. Um, because then when you do your own personal budgeting, you want to make sure you've got the right income figure um, and that you're not caught out. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so the last kind of piece that I just wanted to touch on here as well when we're talking about, um, you know, borrowing power and being able to build up a deposit to buy a home, which I know is very topical. Another option that we can look at as well 
is um, there's a first home super saver scheme, which I'm not sure if everyone's heard about. So Amanda, this won't be relevant for you or anyone else who's got, already got their mortgage. But this is another way of being able to tax effectively put money aside to build up money for a home deposit. So what you can effectively do is put in some voluntary um, contributions to your super, which are kind of set aside the only for the purpose of a home deposit. And the thing is, is that they're only taxed at 15% when you put them in. So if you're getting normally getting taxed at a marginal rate of 32.5%, this can be a really good saving or, or a way of, you know, putting some extra money away to build up a home deposit. So that might be something that um, you might be worth looking at for some of you. So you, you put in those extra contributions and then it's only those extra contributions that have that, that job of, of, of serving as a, as a home deposit can you withdraw. It's not like you're interfering with your retirement savings or anything at all. It's just a way that the government's trying to look at some alternative ways to help first home buyers um, by, yeah, putting those savings as opposed to just parking them in a high interest saver yourself. You're having to pay tax on that interest or and you're still getting taxed on that money that you've earned. You could make those voluntary contributions to your, your super fund and then let them build up for a couple of years and then um, take that out. So yes, those that can be um, a, a helpful, a helpful strategy as well, particularly around that home. Um, is anybody is anybody in that situation where they're trying to save up for a deposit for a house? Dear Amanda's just changing the background of your house. <laughs> changing the background but that is the time to talk about that anyway for those who are hopefully that's helpful um you can look at that that information is also available on the ato as well if you want to learn more a little bit more about that as well might be helpful um so just the last little takeaway question here is um you know what does how why does hex affect your borrowing power so a you know makes me look less reliable or is it that hex repayment reduces my income um, and therefore my ability to service the loan. So just a really pretty straightforward question there, but just to kind of round off that that kind of understanding and take away from how does HEX affect it? Um, thanks, Amanda. Yeah, so yeah, it certainly doesn't make you look less reliable, um, but it does have that cash flow impact. So you just got to think of it like another expense and the bank just wants to know and keep keep eye on what are your expenses um, because that's, that's all going to let them hopefully make a responsible lending choice and um, only allow you to borrow what you can you know um, easily pay off and manage as a as a um, as a borrower as well um okay so i guess just to, just to end up here just to make sure i know we've chatted about a couple of the resources and stuff throughout the session but just um if you've got those links so we've got the study assist um, is really helpful, how to check your loan balances through MyGov. Um, you've got the ATO, so they have the uh, repayment calculator too, Amanda, so that might be helpful, but I find actually going in and doing it, that might be just the accountant in me, but going into the actual tax, the tables and, and following it like that way um, is quite helpful as well. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. Does anybody have any questions? For me, um, before we sort of wrap up, and I can kind of just give my little end in terms of letting you know what's going on with the SDA, SP, SDPA as well this year and um, some of the other topics we might cover. Um, just wondering, we can go into the our ATO there through MyGov and see the HEX debt. Can we also see yep. payments that have been made in that same place? Like what if we have been making payments? Where do we see the payments? So I... Uh, I I don't know. Um, thank you, Nicola. Um, I, I, I think that that should happen. Um, I don't know if that's where it should be reported, but that's, that's my understanding is that what you should see is you should see all of those transactions. So you should see the debt itself accumulate and it should be over periods of time where you would see um, it accumulate in terms of semesters. And then at that 12 month point on the 1st of June, you would see it indexed. And that would be another transaction where you would see the amount and, and the calculation because there's got to be transparency. And then you would see the, now that the challenge with the repayments is that although you've made repayments during the year, they're not due 
all um, accounted for until the 30th of June. So you get indexed before those repayments that you made throughout the year take effect. Does that make sense? So you could have made repayments throughout the whole year. It gets indexed and then they come off your bill. And then you make payments. It gets indexed and then they come off your bill. So there's that's also a technical part of it that they're kind of looking into as well that, that makes it kind of feel like you're, you're trying to take three steps forward, but then they kind of put you back. And then, yeah, but you're still making progress. Mm. You're still making progress. Yeah, but I would I would see that you should see it all those transactions come through in that MyGov, just like you can with your super and um you could yeah, certainly find the details of it. All right. Oh, the little nosy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you wanna you wanna see it, you wanna know what's going on. Um and then otherwise you can also then check and reconcile it against your payroll records and ask them to send you what they've actually you know, sent to the ATO. Okay. Yeah. To make sure that it matches up to say because when they pay you, they're they're pay they're sending money to your bank account and they're sending money to the ATO. They're sending money to ATO in terms of income tax and in terms of your help help debt. So you want to make sure that those amounts also add up. Cool. Thank you. It was great. Yeah. 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 No worries. Oh cool. Thank you. Glad it was helpful. Very. Lovely, lovely, good. Um, and, yeah, just I guess in, in terms of anyone um, needs any specific help or wants to chat through any of their sort of, you know, I, I'm kind of here in terms of being a, I have um, qualifications in financial counselling as well as being an accountant. And, again, I'm not a, a financial advisor, but if there's anything you want to kind of talk through if you're doing a budget or doing any planning or um, doing calculations yourself or want to check things, um, you can certainly book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me. They're free. So the SCPA have um, a set number of sessions um, that they've allocated for students. So yeah, feel free to get in touch um, with skills at scpa.net.au um, and we can chat through anything. Um, even some of, you know, around that emotional side of stuff as well. We can sort of talk through your relationship with money and, and even help with that side as well. So happy to talk through that on a one-on-one. -on -one. I work for um, a non-for-profit non and we can do that salary sacrificing thing. And I I kind of understand it's a really good thing, but I also don't understand it. So yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, we can certainly talk through that. And what, what that I think is important there is again having the information so you can make the decision for yourself because it's really comparing two different scenarios and then what does that mean bottom line for me at the end of the year how much money would I actually be you know you know is hitting my bank account and you want to see the balance yeah see the difference um so yeah we can certainly um so that's what I would encourage you to do if you've got that information is kind of set up the two scenarios say okay right what would my income look like if I didn't salary sacrifice? So I would earn X, I'd be taxed this, and this is how much I'd take home. But if I salary, and what were the things that you salary sacrifice? Is it um, being a not-for-profit, they um, they do all sorts of things, don't they? There's different but, ways um, they do it. Mortgage, your electricity bill, almost everything. Like Yeah, there's a, but it's up to a certain amount, isn't it? Yeah, yeah about 50 Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it would be worth actually yeah, working through the calculations so you know what that impact is going to be, um, if it's better off to do it or not. Um, and they may even have some, like, calculator or some support for you as well. Like, I would certainly reach out to them if that's something to see, you know, ask them if, if they have, you know, some sort of resources that could help you. Um, just so you can actually calculate it because it is really hard. You don't really know if it's if it is good or not. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but, but the main the main impact is tax. So what you would be doing is working out. So if you salary sacrifice it, it means that it's reducing it's reducing your taxable income. And then you want to see how much is it actually reducing my taxable income and what impact is that going to happen have on my cash flow? That's really what you're asking. Yeah. And yeah. How, um, uh, find it like organize those sessions with you. 
So you just contact, um, just email just at the bottom of the slide here. So skills at scpa.net.au. And just let them know that you just wanted to book a session and um, they'll, yeah, they'll get you in touch with me. So that's, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Lovely. Great. So any other questions, um, Hasini or Nic Nicola, are you all okay? Did that sort of cover off what you wanted to get out of the session tonight? Thanks, Liz. Thank you very much for the great session. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm an international student, so I don't have any that so far. Good. But it's it's great That's to good. know about the, how the financial system works here, because I'm ex-banker and I was attached to IT. So it, it's really interesting how it oh, works. Totally. So yeah. uh, just one question. Uh, comparatively, what would be a good salary? Is it like 80,000 to 90,000 is considered as a good salary? So, well, a good salary is, is a hard one to answer because it's all a bit subjective. But I could say that the average salary yeah. in Australia, yeah, is, is around, I think the average at the moment is somewhere between 80 and 90, I think is the latest statistics. Okay. Um, it's gone up. Um, it used to be about 75, but I think, it, yeah, so that, that would be your average. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and you, certainly, if, depending on the field you're in, I would certainly make sure that you, if, are you um, negotiating salary at the moment or where are you at? I'm looking forward to start something okay. out, but uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure whether it's a good salary or not. 90, 95,000 is uh, okay. the, the under discussion. So we'll see how it goes. And other but, thing is, I would like to know how the credit scoring works. Like... Uh, so credit scoring, so there's credit scoring in Australia um, that's kept, there's um, a couple of, and um, it might need to be a topic off offline to this one, um, but it's certainly something that we do cover um, in a future webinar that you can look up where you get your credit score from. And obviously the things that impact it are any money that you borrow or loan um, will impact that credit score, probably similar to what you might have come across before in, in your banking experience. Um, but if you were you wanting to find out what your credit score was or? Yes, I'm looking forward to have a good credit scoring because at the moment I don't have any debt. So Okay, okay. Uh, uh, so, well, and, and, and for what purpose? So what were you using the, the credit score for? Are you, are you looking to borrow money to buy a house and you're hoping that the bank would then look up a credit score for and that you're... Exactly, to I'm looking forward yeah, to purchase sure. on a house. Yeah. And, and it's perfectly fine that you haven't got, you haven't had any money. Sometimes people think they need to have a credit card to demonstrate that they've got a good credit score. If you can, you can still demonstrate from your financial history. Um, that's only one small component in terms of which you're probably aware of as well when banks are lending money. So the yeah, key yeah. components, the key levers are the size of the deposit and your cash flow. They're your serviceability. They're the most important things. Um, but obviously, if you've got history of savings, which you can demonstrate in other ways, um, they're all going to contribute to your. Um, but it's that job, having a, a you know a secure job and a deposit, um, that are, are significant contributors to that that decision. Yeah. One last question, Liz. Uh, you mentioned yes. about adding some additional amount as a super, uh, sorry, yes. super, super animation. So yes, voluntary as, contribution as for the first house purchasing. So oh, as yes. an National student, is it possible for us to do that as well? If if we go for a fixed term permanent uh contract of employment, um, or is it only for the Australian citizen? I would have to I would have to look at the at the fine details. I feel like it may be just for Australian residents. It may okay. be something that's just offered, so I wouldn't want to give you the wrong information. But I would certainly have a look at that. Um, superannuation scheme you might be able to find you google that and look up the debt you'll find the details of it there um, to understand you will be paid super um, but whether yeah. you can participate in that scheme I'm just not sure of the finer details sorry yeah okay thank you very yeah. much Lisa. yeah yeah you're welcome yeah and best of luck with the job and the negotiation salary negotiations <laughs> thank very you cool. very much <laughs> very good um and Nicola are you okay 
maybe she's already headed off today. No. Yep, all good. Thank you. Um, That's good. You covered everything I was looking for. Thank you. Oh, I'm so pleased. Okay, wonderful. So I knew at the beginning you were hoping to get lots of questions answered and I wanted to just check in back with you. So that's fabulous. Um, so pleased. Thank so you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And yeah, stay in touch if you've got any questions. Just use that skills at SCPA. You can even email me if you don't want to have a session, but if there's just something that you thought of afterwards, um, just get in contact through them. And um, yeah, I'm here to, to help if I can. Um, sometimes there's questions I can't answer, but I can have a good dig around for you and find them. Thanks. And I just oh, good. Um, through my gov there going through the ATO, um, yes. we the next debt and all the um, debits. Rep the repayments, yeah. And see the credits when you've made a payment. I can see. Brilliant. You can see them all. So you know now that they're coming out of your pay. Yeah. That's great. Oh, that's really reassuring. That's perfect. Yeah, cool. All right. That's yeah, great. brilliant. That's lovely. Thanks for confirming that too, Amanda. That's brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Lovely. No problem at all. Catch up with you again.